guys, it's Holly, and today we'll be taking a look at a long, long, long awaited LEGO Harry Potter set, and that is our first ever Deathly Hallows Part 1 set, which of course is the brand new Ministry of Magic. Now this is set 76403, and we'll be retailing for 100 US dollars and 180 Australian, and I am really excited for this because it's just the first Deathly Hallows set we've ever gotten. I mean, to me, it does feel a little bit bleak just by looking at the outside of the box, but there is such a fantastic minifigure selection and it's something we've never gotten before so I'm really interested to see what this set has to offer. I'm also really excited for what this set could mean now being a thing. Hopefully we get some more Deathly Hallow sets in the future, especially more from part one. I'm really excited. This set also has a ton of other references in it from other films which is incredibly fun so let's go and take a look at it. So here is the Ministry of Magic and overall I, I think this set is a lot better in person. I was really worried when I first saw images of it that it was just gonna feel like really awkward but after sort of seeing how the set works, how it's built and just having it in person I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I initially thought. However I do think that for the price point like a lot of these Harry Potter sets this wave is sort of pushing it a bit with the price especially because this set is the same price as the Astronomy Tower and in the US this is also the same price as things like the Burrow and the Great Hall was and I don't know if this quite sort of feels like a complete so this, I guess display piece and play set like those sets did as gorgeous as it is and I think that's purely because that in it's sort of built form it's just a giant picture frame sort of thing. That being said I am incredibly excited that this set exists and that we have the Ministry of Magic and just everything that this has to offer I, I absolutely love so let's go and take a look at the minifigures and then get into this set. First up from the Ministry of Magic is Albert Runcorn aka Harry Potter and I really like the design of this figure. It is shocking how similar this outfit looks to the actual outfits from the film. I think they got this completely spot on especially those torso detailings with all of like the stitching markings, even the Ministry pin, even just the tiny printing on that shirt which takes up such a small surface area of a minifigure torso. The face to me as well I love. I feel like this could be reused really easily though part of me thinks the eyebrows are a bit too aggressive on him or maybe the hair could have been a tiny bit different I don't know there's just something wrong about the head that it doesn't quite look like it's right but then again it also feels like it matches like the five to seven came from years ago but like any polyjuice potion character you can turn it around to its alternate character which of course in this case is Harry Potter which I love this alternate face for this person perfectly captures Harry's face as he's running away from all of the Death Eaters who are part of the Ministry once they get caught. I don't even know how LEGO was able to achieve that but it looks fantastic and congratulations to whoever that designer was or graphic designer. It looks spectacular and I always love getting a new Harry Potter print for a face. Next up is our good friend Reg Catamol, aka Ron Weasley, and again I am shocked at how detailed this torso is. I just wish though that there was some coattail printing on the legs. It does feel a tiny bit bare, especially compared to Albert, even though Albert did have that sort of typical coattails piece. It would have been lovely to see some more detailing on him here, especially considering not many characters actually have leg printing in this set. It feels a very much like a burrow case. Overall, I love the design of the torso. The fact that there is like water stains printed on it as if he's gone to Yaxley's office to fix the rain is hilarious to me and I love that attention to detail and just that reference. Also again just like Albert Runcorn the design on the torso is amazing. Unlike Albert though I think the face print is a lot better. I really really like that facial expression and the hair I think matches too. Overall this minifigure just makes me incredibly happy. It's very 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 unique and in the end I'm really glad again that they went for that rain print and when you switch it around of course you do have Ron Weasley's face. It does feel a tiny bit bare though compared to Harry's like it doesn't look all that different or that unique but I do have to say it, I think it really captures that scene where he sort of gets caught out kissing Mary and then the actual red catamole comes in so it does really match the scene and I guess what happens in the movie and is accurate but in terms of like a face print they could have gone for I would have much preferred a more distressed one as they're running trying to to escape. 
And last but not least is Mathilda Hopkirk. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right. I don't have the box anywhere near me, so I can't check. And now I feel like a fake fan. But ultimately, she is Hermione. And I really wish that she had like a fabric skirt piece. I just feel like the legs continuing on, it just feels very incomplete. Like we just go from dark red to gray. I don't know, not a huge fan of that. I would have loved a red fabric skirt to go along with her. Besides that, I think the face print is fantastic. It really captures that sort of like, awkward, scared, like shivering sort of face that I feel like she had throughout the whole thing, especially when sitting with Umbridge. The hairpiece as well is exactly what I guess what I'd expect. I wouldn't expect Lego to make a brand new hairpiece for this character. She also does come along with a black briefcase, which is pretty neat considering she was carrying that the entire time. And just like everyone else, she has a brand new alternate polyjuice potion face, which is definitely a lot more angry. And this is really what I expected Ron's to look like, like something a aggressive, something different. I really like it, but at the same time, I feel like the mouth's a tiny bit weird, but it perfectly matches sort of the style and tone of the other Hermione heads, which I really like considering that is a reused head for a lot of other themes. Moving along, and we're going to talk about the most boring character out of this set, and that is a Dementor, who for some reason has this weird handheld accessory with some clear bits and some translucent grey. Not entirely sure why. This is just a Dementor. I mean, great for army building, nothing too special. It's got the same sort of cape design, same sort of ghost print design, only one-sided face. Chances are, you've probably got one. It's nice to get another one, but it's nothing special. Another kind of boring character is Arthur Weasley. I mean, I get why he's in this set. He's a known Ministry employee. He also took Harry down for his court trial in the Order of the Phoenix, and that was really the first time we saw the Ministry. So I get why he's in this set, but there's really nothing all that special. Again, would have loved to have seen some coattails printing on him, because it just feels like his jacket just abruptly stops, which is kind of annoying. His face print is slightly different, I believe. He's got a very sort of awkward, angry-looking alternate face, which I'm not a huge fan of. I just think it looks incredibly awkward and makes him look really weird. I don't know if it's because the mouth feels a tiny bit too low or if anyone else feels this way, but I certainly feel like this just looks kind of awkward. And just like Mathilda, she actually has a briefcase which inside it contains a little printed B piece, which I think is the same ones as the Winnie the Pooh set, which is kind of cute, but I also don't really understand why it's in his briefcase. Moving along, we have Mary Catamol, who shockingly is one of two characters who actually have leg printing in this set, which I don't know why it's her, but I'm still grateful for it. Nevertheless, I think it looks great. I really like her torso print for this. I think it captures her outfit perfectly. Her face, though, at least this one, I feel like doesn't really match. I think the hair was a really good choice. This alternate face, on the other hand, though, I think this is perfect. It really captures just how, like, scared and fearful she was during that whole sort of umbrage and interrogation and I guess just the entire sequence of what I remember her from the movie. I am glad that she's included in this set because I don't think she's ever going to show up again. Like this is very much a one and done deal and it's really interesting to get a character like this from a set. However, I just don't understand why she got the extra printing and other characters didn't. But hey, she has a cool new face print so that's a really big win. Next up, we've got everyone's favourite villain and character to hate, Dolores Umbridge, who, just like most people in this set, again, doesn't have leg printing, which would have really been nice to have some skirt printing. Her outfit as well, just in general, feels very plain to me. This outfit actually had a shocking amount of detail on it. It was a really nice dress and really well designed, but it just feels incredibly bare bones here, and I think part of that might be due to the fact that LEGO doesn't actually have that many shades of pink in their library, but also the fact that they probably didn't want to use the budget on Umbridge's legs. But you know what they did use the budget for? A brand new one by one Slytherin lock-in tile, which I actually really love. For some reason, I'm not a huge fan of the sort of round shape, like I would have loved a new molded sort of like hexagonal awkward locket shape. So, you know, I mean, I guess that's cool. But I really like the print on it and I'm shocked that they actually even included it in this set, let alone as well some of the other sets in this wave. Umbridge, just like her other variations, has this same face print until you turn it around to the other side and she looks a lot more angry and confused, which I'm really, really glad for. Again, I'm loving these new face prints and these new details, especially on existing characters. It's great to see. I just wish she had a tiny bit more detail on the rest of her. 
Moving along, and next up we have Yaxley, who looks incredible. I mean, I don't think anyone else would have thought about a, using a different hairpiece for this figure. I love that we're bringing back that sort of Pirates of the Caribbean piece. It works really well for him. His face print, too, is really funny. It's just such a shame that he's got a single-sided head. I would have loved to have seen an alternate facial expression. The fact that it's blank is kind of disappointing. And then again, I don't really alternate expressions too much on my minifigures unless they have multiple versions. But his printing on his jacket again looks really great. It's just a shame that they again didn't use the coattails for him, although at least with him his jacket's a lot shorter and it's not as detailed I guess as some of the other characters, so it doesn't bug me as much. But overall I think he looks really great, the details look pretty accurate, and I'm a big fan. And lastly, we have the current Minister for Magic in charge, and please correct me if I'm wrong on this name, I have tried so many times. Pious Thickus, I th Thickness, Pious. I know his name is Pious, thank you to everyone who has told me how to pronounce it, I'm sorry if I butchered it again, but I really like this minifigure design. The hair piece is actually the same hair as Phoebe Buffet from the Friends Apartment set, as well as Sally from the Disney CMF series too, and I think it works really well for him in this case. I love the way it looks. I'm pretty sure this as well is the same colour as the Jonathan Van Ness variation from the Queer Eye set. It's just amazing parts usage in my opinion. The torso print as well has a lot of really nice detail. Again, I love that ministry pin and all of the shiny buttons, as well as the stripes on his jacket. And for him in particular, I don't actually mind the plain legs all that much. I think it works fine because I didn't really need stripes or coattails for him in particular. His face print as well is fantastic. I love that sort of like really worried and scared look and even just this like really nervous grin on the other side. This really matches just any scene that I can remember him in being like the opening in Malfoy Manor or even just the whole scene where he actually became Minister for Magic. It's really great, really well done and I love what Lego has done with him. He also comes along with this black briefcase, which inside has a Time Turner printed tile, which is the same one that Hermione had in the Clock Tower. He also comes along with a black briefcase, which has a printed Time Turner tile in it, which looks really neat, but I'm also kind of confused as to why that's included with him. Because at least from memory in the book, I don't recall him having a Time Turner, so it kind of just screams cursed child memories to me. But I mean, I'll take it. I'd love another Time Turner piece. I'll accept. So here is the Ministry build on its own, and overall, just like Grimmauld Place, this is actually just a tiny bit smaller than I thought. Not in terms of, like, build height, this is definitely quite tall and probably what I expected, but just in terms of, I guess, how much stuff you have. On the box, they've actually taken out some of the interiors and sort of placed them around, I guess, to sort of make it look like you've got more side builds than you actually do, which, I mean, technically you can take them out and sort of scatter them around and make your display. To me, personally, I would much rather have the rooms be complete than be empty, so I've just left them in there for now. Now also, before I go into just sort of looking at everything up close, I did just want to touch on the overall design of the Ministry of Magic, because when I first looked at it, it felt like the colour scheme was a bit off, and then when I saw the sets in person, I realised why that was, and it's purely because there is a lot more dark green in this set than I feel like there actually was on the sets. There is a lot less red that is featured throughout this model compared to the real thing. I think that's initially why I was sort of like, oh, this doesn't look quite right. Even though the colour scheme is pretty accurate for the most part, I personally would have much preferred though all of these bright red pieces on the Ministry building to be dark red. I feel like it would make it look a tiny bit more elegant and just really tie the whole sort of like look and like Ministry government sort of thing all of together. Like I think that would really just kick this set up a notch. I don't necessarily think the red looks bad, I just think it could be better. That being said, let's get into this set, starting off with my favourite little b build over here, the telephone booth. I cannot express how much I love this telephone booth build, just in terms of, I guess, just Harry Potter and including stuff from the story, but also just in general. I think this is a really cute build. I mean, I wish there was like a glass panel in the back. I get why there's not. You could easily probably modify it. But overall, this would work really well, I guess, if you're trying to make a replica of London or anything like that, or like a London street front. This is perfect, especially since you get four of the stickered panels. It's 
really cute. It feels very size accurate. This printed door as well was such a big shock. I was honestly expecting that to be a sticker. Very big fan of that. It reminds me a lot as well of the pieces in Diagon Alley. I can't remember if there was a door in that set, shockingly enough. Um, if there was, I'm pretty sure it's the same one, but I definitely remember this panelling on like some window pieces. So it's awesome to see them make it into a door. On the inside as well, of course, you've actually got a telephone on the back wall, and unfortunately there's no space to actually, like, stick a minifigure down, even though there's definitely room to put minifigures in there, they're just not gonna, like, stay still. Overall though, this is a fantastic side build, and I love it, and I feel like people are gonna get a lot of use out of this thing. Next up, we have two tiny little flying paper aeroplanes. Really nothing special, it's just some traffic signs on top of some white translucent stands. I mean, it's nice, they are in the ministry, you can barely see them on this background, but you know, just, it's just a small inclusion. Much appreciated though. You also get two of those like tiny little walking bombs, which they actually tell you to like put on the top of the build, but you do build, sort of build them separately and on their own. Again, pretty neat inclusion. I feel like they were just sort of thrown in because it's like, oh yeah, that was a thing from the ministry. But honestly, I don't really mind. I really like them. And then lastly, out of the side builds, you get the Ministry Fountain, which is a lot more PG than I guess it probably should be, which is understandable. This is Lego. It's a family children's product, and in order for us to get the Deathly Hallows, if we have to tone it down a bit, I really don't care. You can, I guess you can always add some minifigure heads to sort of, like, make the fountain look a bit better. To me, though, it just feels a tiny bit small. Like, that fountain is very big and very grand and very tall. Like, I just wish it was sort of built up a tiny bit more and maybe had, like, an outer room around it then again I feel like maybe that's making it a tiny too big for a side build but nevertheless I think it's really awesome it would have been great though to have some like translucent blue pieces on the water like it just feels very I guess just blunt and just dull when it comes to like coloring the green ties really nicely into the buildings and the gold stands out but just the water itself is very flat for a fountain Besides that though, I'm actually just glad they included it in general. Part of me thought they were just gonna exclude it altogether. So here is the Ministry, and overall, I really enjoyed the way that this was built. I mean, on the back of the box, you could see that this can sort of just be rearranged, and they showcase that in the product images as well, as each piece is a different component. You have three separate floors, which are all individual of each other. You can be rearranged, and this set really takes, I guess, a page out of the sort of Harry Potter modular castle book, and even just like the recent Monkey Kid sets, in order to make it very customizable, and I really want to get a second version of this set. I want to run out and buy one the second I see another one available and be able to just expand on this and combine it and add more towers to the side and just make this even more grand. There is a lot of customizability here which makes me so so excited. The only limitation that there is though is that the roof pieces are connected to this centerpiece so you sort of have to modify it in order to make additional pieces individual and independent of each other but I also do like the fact that it combines them in a pretty simple and easy way without including Technic pins even though the set does sort of give you them in order to attach things. You could also even put these buildings back to back if you really wanted to which I find pretty cool. So in order to show you guys this set, firstly I'm going to take a look at the top since that is the part that's sort of connecting both of the buildings and then we're going to go through and take a look at each room one by one. Now the top design to me is really well done and there is a ton of really nice, I guess, just design choices. Firstly, these dome pieces look spectacular. I also love sort of like the flu network chimneys, having these like monkey kid clouds sticking out the side. I think that's fantastic parts usage. Not to mention sort of like these fence pieces at the back, just to sort of give it a bit more pizzazz. You've also got some gold flowers, which then tie into the golden ministry sign, which is decorated with Ministry of Magic stickered red two by two which again I love you've got some spanners as detailing you've got upside down bricks and overall I think it's just really well built and I also love the fact that this entire thing is just floating like it's on top and connected via the two buildings in order for it to stand up which I really actually like down the bottom of this center console you have this sort of like little rod thing which to be honest the red technic pieces for once actually blend into the set pretty well like which is pretty unusual 
unusual and just never really happens and then you've got this giant ministry banner here which unfortunately there's not a sticker on the second side it's literally just like one piece it's not the end of the world but I would have loved for it to be double-sided so that when you do switch this set around in order to play with it that decoration is still there and present. Around the back of the rooftops there's really not a whole lot on these side panels but up the top here you can see that there's this little like desk station which I'm not entirely sure whose desk this is supposed to be I mean I'm just gonna make it the Minister of Magics and then I'm gonna call it a day it does just sort of seem a bit out of place though like personally I would just take this typewriter and this lamp off just to make the whole thing just look a bit cleaner but it's also really interesting to see that Lego did actually utilize that space I guess it's just something I didn't expect them to do once that whole top section though is taken off, you can see that you can combine these things side by side and honestly it looks really good. You could even have like a whole row I guess of just like flat sections. You could make like three mini towers instead of two big ones. I just really like that Lego did sort of consider customizability with a set like this. Now at the bottom of the first tower for this set we have a good old flu network fireplace which is really well detailed with some gold wrenches, you've also got some gold candlesticks complete with some green flu network pieces and this entire thing is a working play feature which is really neat. If you turn it around there's actually a handle which is represented by this green gem here that you can pull back and allow minifigures to use the flu network. This whole contraption and the way it was built reminds me so much of the flu network fireplace from the original Burrow in 2010. I just find it so incredibly hilarious, even just down to the pieces used in the overall build. So in order to show you how it works, I thought I would use a minifigure from that set and make it Arthur. So I just thought I'll grab the little handle at the back, tip it backwards, and he disappears, and he's traveled by flu network and hopefully not gotten lost. Moving on down and we've got our next floor which again I really wish that these pillars were dark red I just think it would have looked a lot more elegant especially because there is so much green on the sides in order to get that extra width from this model the color scheme just feels a little bit unproportionate but all of these little sections are pretty much built the same only with the tiniest difference on one of them having some newspaper windows instead of just like all clear ones the insides though all are very different this first one is actually the sort of I guess just like courtroom where Umbridge is doing her little interrogation which this entire thing you can pop out really easily which I love so that you can have Umbridge sitting at her desk with her little cat Patronus who very conveniently actually fits in this whole section I was worried that the cat tail would get in the way and wouldn't be able to sit on the desk but good news is it actually works and in this tiny amount of space as well that they've given you you can still get this additional chair in order to stick Mary Catamol in there which I love. I mean ideally you'd probably have this section on its own and you could take this out and really sort of utilize the space a bit more which I think is I guess just a great play feature even though it's not really a play feature of sorts. I do really like that. There's also this sort of stacked pile of I guess just like all of the muggle-borns who she's accusing and interrogating with two stickered panels one being on the top there and the other one being on Umbridge's desk. The stickers are exactly the same like there's really not that much different between them. The inside of the second one continues on from that Umbridge theme, giving us Umbridge's office, which is an interior that I have always wanted to see Lego do in proper minifigure scale, and I am so glad we have it because those cat sticker pieces are going to be so useful in trying to make Umbridge's office from like the Hogwarts year and like the Order of the Phoenix. It's something I've wanted to do for a while. I am certainly using those pieces. I also love this cat portrait here. It's hilarious. I love too how the Lego designers were able to make this entire interior pink given that like you look at the other one and the whole thing is just like black and green and really gloomy like this stands out this screams umbridge you've even got a little desk chair there for her another stick it sort of ministry paper and of course a cup of tea i love it i think it's great even the use of like the friends bows and the stars this whole interior is just fantastic and makes me super happy i love the design of it Moving on to the second tower and at the bottom we have this little compartment here which has a piece that I have wanted for a very long time and that is a printed undesirable number one poster. This piece has been such a long time coming. I've had this on my wish list for years now and I'm so happy to get it. I was worried there was going to be a sticker but luckily Lego pulled through and they, they impressed me and they surprised me and made it a print and I absolutely love it. The only thing that I would change though is making this a 2x3 instead of a 2x2 
I get why it's a two by two because it just fits a lot better, I guess, in the confines of where it's supposed to be. But I think a two by three would have given you a tiny bit more space just to spread it out and make it look a bit more accurate. But nevertheless, there are four of these little stacks, I guess, of just posters and magazines, very reminiscent of sort of the end of the Ministry of Magic scene, where all of these posters blow all over the place, which you will see again in a second. And overall, the design for this sort of section is a bit bare bones, but I still really like it. Like, it feels very unique, and I'm glad that it's different to the other one. It just really, I guess, is a lot more interesting. However, when you turn it around on the inside, it's kind of ugly. As you can see, the exposed back of a plate, which really isn't that all that interesting. I mean, then again, all of the detail is on the exterior rather the interior. But as you can see, again, there are these two little knobs which you can actually push and all of the papers will go flying. It's a pretty neat play feature. However, it does mean that these like pieces on the sides will fall off relatively easily. Like I've accidentally knocked those like little levers a couple times and sent things flying, but it's nothing too major. Now the second floor of this second tower is the only one where there is some variation on the exterior as like I said you've got these newspaper panels that first appeared in the Stranger Things set in order to represent all of the undesirable number one posters and newspapers flying up against the windows which I thought was incredibly clever. I love it. I mean yes these are the same ones so it doesn't actually have any Harry Potter newspapers type of things. I don't really mind. I just love how they really included that and included that little easter egg I guess into the scene. On the Inside of it though, we just switch it up to a completely different movie, giving us the Department of Mysteries, which has this really nice shelf, none of which completely look like orbs, and actually these are just, I guess, alternate builds of each shelf. And if you pull this lever, the entire thing will come crumbling down because Ginny ran a tiny bit too fast and cast a bit too big of a spell and caused a lot of destruction and almost killed all her friends. Besides that though, the room looks fantastic. <laughs> I love how many of these pearlescent pieces as well that you get, it just makes me really happy. It's one of my favorite Lego colors. I just love the way that it looks. I thought it was a pretty neat inclusion, though it does make me wonder if we're ever gonna get like a separate Department of Mystery set ever. And lastly is another office, this time belonging to Arthur Weasley, and this is where I feel like so many references are to just like other Harry Potter films. Starting off with my first one, which is the Weasley family portrait of their trip to Egypt, which of course featured in the Daily Prophet newsletter in The Prisoner of Azkaban. I love that that is hanging up on the wall. I'm pretty sure as well that this isn't the first time we've got it. If I recall correctly, I remember that this is in the Burrow set. I'm pretty sure when I was building I sort of realized that. I could be wrong, I will double check, but I'm pretty sure that that is a thing. There is also a reference to the Chamber of Secrets with the rubber duck being in this glass dome. Of course referencing to the first time Arthur met Harry as he's sort of questioning what the function of a rubber duck is. Every time I see a rubber duck now I do think of that quote. There's also just a ton of muggle artifacts everywhere. There's a bunch of cups, there's a baby bottle, a teapot, you've got a fork or I guess a dingle hopper if you're a Disney fan on top of a boom box, you've got some gems, I guess what's some sort of potion as well as a clock and a photo of an aeroplane because I'm starting to think that wizards don't like air travel. Overall, I really like the design of this office and I'm really glad that they did make Arthur's office in Lego form, especially considering he's in the set. He's a pretty known member as well, like working at the ministry. So it's really awesome to see that. And I think it ties along perfectly as well with Umbridge's office. So that is the Ministry of Magic. I think this set is really great altogether. You can tell that there was a lot of time, effort, care, and energy put into this set. You can also tell as well that the Lego Harry Potter designers were very much listening to all of the feedback that we've been saying and sort of putting out there, saying, you know, we really want Deathly Hallows sets. It's not that dark. Hey, you can do the Ministry of Magic scene. And that is exactly what they did. I really love this set. I just feel like, as just a display piece and even a play set, I don't think it quite holds up to that $180 price point as the Astronomy Tower did. That being said, I don't think it's necessarily overpriced per se, and I wouldn't necessarily say you have to wait for a sale for this one. I definitely think it is worth it, but you're definitely probably going to get a lot more value, as with anything, if you wait for a sale. I mean, this is definitely one of the best sets of this wave, and it's such an exciting thing, just the fact that it's the first ever Deathly Hallow set as well, I feel like does make up a lot of excitement and a lot of value with this set. The fact that this set as well has so many different characters we've never had before in LEGO 
Lego form. Like, this is the first time for a lot of them, as well as new variations, new face prints, new torso prints. Overall, there is a lot here for any Lego Harry Potter fan. I also love the fact that we finally got the undesirable number one poster. That's been a personal thing I've wanted for a really long time. Just the references. It overall is so fulfilling, I think, for a big Harry Potter fan. But let me know your thoughts on this set down in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel down below. And until next time, guys, I'll see you later.